Hello there. This is just a real short intro to my South Bend Lave video. When I shot the videos, I had a lot of shake. Could be I can't hold my camera too steady. So I tried to run it through Adobe Premiere Pro using the warp function, which gets rid of the shakes, but it does some funky um, effects to the video. But I felt it was better than the shaking. The shaking could really get on your nerves. So, uh, I'll try better next time, but uh, and you get what I you get what I shot. Uh, hopefully it'll be useful. Thanks a lot. Here we are again. We're in the basement today, mostly because it's hot and muggy. Uh, just uh, the end of June here in New England, and it's thunder showers outside and the rest of it. So I'm not going to get to finish my Terramite anytime soon. But in the meantime, I have decided to try to take care of a couple of projects. Now, this is my basement. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But this is more or less the metalworking end. I have a nice cutoff saw here, a reciprocating hacksaw, I'm probably a hundred years old, using a washing machine motor for my uncle. And this is a South Bend 9 inch. A lot of my tooling for the South Bend and the lathe on the other side. Some machine tools. Some more tooling that is not dedicated to either machine or I have yet to decide what to do with it. Some of my gauges. Another cheap cutoff saw here. My bridge port which is going to need some work. I'm, I've decided I'm, I'm probably going to put some bolts and and some nuts on the bottom and actually have some adjusting points instead of trying to shim it and get it close enough. This is a big LeBlond that I have combination chuck on it. I have other chucks for it down below. Some tooling here. You've already seen some tooling here. Some more tooling here. And the problem I have, after watching Maddie's workshop and cutting edge engineering and snowball engineering, um, yeah, I guess I'm a hack. <laughs> I never did it professionally. I'm an IT guy. My uncle was a machinist. That's where I got most of the tools from. Um, I have a knack for fixing things and so forth. Now, there's another chuck for this machine up here. Um, I've, I, I've used this chuck quite a bit, the four jaw. Um, it's easier to get more accuracy, but I think I have to look at the bearing in here. I think I've got too much run out. Uh, looking the other way, I just turned the corner. There's a whole bunch of woodworking stuff over there. There's a homemade bender. More woodworking stuff. Or combination stuff. Table saw. This is a big cutoff saw. This is a really nice one. Um, computer and some workbench stuff. Three grinders. Uh, nice heavy lathes. And the other end is a lot of storage down there. In that dark room in the back is my ham radio shack and my electronics workbench because I do a lot of electronics. I used to do process control design and more storage here there's there's raw material in back that I use for some of my projects so anyway that's the quick the quick runaround um, more tools than I can keep maintained and this one in particular really nice South Bend lathe but it only had a four jaw when I got it I have a three jaw and what I'm thinking of doing is taking one of these plates that fits this 
and make an adapter. Make an adapter here. Take one of these plates. But my problem with that is I've been hesitant. I haven't found a good way to do it, but I think I finally come up with a procedure. Um, there's another face plate down there and another four jaw. Now this chuck is a little heavy, but that's the way it is. We'll see what happens. I, it's about the same size as what's on there. I have some really nice big ones, but they're not made for a nine inch lathe. So we're gonna get started on that. Um, we'll see what I do in a bit. We're back after a couple of minutes of thinking and I'm taking a little detour. Uh, this is a South Bend Precision Model A 9 inch and what I found when I cleaned this really thoroughly yesterday is that this lock is missing for the carriage. So if anybody knows where I can buy that lock, obviously a bolt is easy, um, and I, or the dimensions, I guess I could probably figure that out. But also, if something else is missing, I would expect this side, the back side has a bar on it to keep it from lifting up, but I don't see one on this side. So I'm wondering if I'm missing something there, or if I need to adjust this gear up somehow, I, I, I don't know. Uh, if any of you guys have experience with it, it would be great to know. So my biggest concern was how to get a three-jaw concentric. And I think I was overthinking it. So what I'm going to do is take this three-jaw and chuck a rod in here. Nice piece of finished rod. Put it in the four-jaw. Get the rod so that it's exactly centered and then check the back to see if this edge is exactly centered, which it should be, but I'm going to check that. That will let me know if I've got a guide to mount a plate to or an adapter. I, this, is the, this is the original, that won't fit. The others are simply flat backing plates, which really won't do a good job. I think I'm gonna have to go with this. And then of course I'll chuck this in and see what this is. And I may even turn that down enough so that I can make a decent adapter sleeve. So that's where we're going to go with this. So we'll see what happens um, in a minute. You just have to love post-production editing. So I'm going to stick this in partway through my series here on this lathe. I actually went and found the part number for this lock uh, uh, on a website dedicated South Bend lathe from Practical Machinist and once I had the part number from a parts catalog I was able to go on uh, my favorite well maybe not my favorite but the useful website that sells everything auction and buy it now and all the rest of it and for 25 bucks including shipping I got the lock for the bottom so that part is taken care of so thank you very much everybody for keeping old documentation around and being so helpful here is step one I've chucked a really good size piece a shaft in there and got it about as centered as I could. I think my needle is sticking a little. I'm gonna move it in a little force it. Yeah, so you can see it moves just a little. So now what I'm going to do is put a tool in and skim this just a little. Skim that just enough so that it is absolutely perfect for being round and then I'll put this chuck on it on the back. I'm going to take this end off so that I can get it square. So that's the next step.
All right, so there I've turned that and basically just skimmed it off so that it's perfectly concentric and not out of round. So now we're going to try to sneak our say that that's pretty good it uh, I think look at I've got more slop in the head stock than I have anything else so that works pretty good uh, I've got that all set pull this back get this to the back side of the And then I'm going to mount this, so bear with me here. This is a little edit after the fact. I may not have explained my sequence and rationale here for some of you correctly. So I'm not going to unchuck my three jaw right now, but I'm going to try to explain my thought process. So I had the four jaw chuck in. I got this as close to being, um, I'll say concentric or centered as possible. I then cleaned this shoulder off and made that so it was within a thousandth of an inch of centered. Then I took this three jaw faced the other way of course and chucked this this hole here around this so that it was actually facing backwards I could then check the back side to see if this recess was also concentric or if it was out of round and they had corrected that in the backing plate mount which I would have had to deal with. What I ended up doing with this one is instead of worrying even about whether this was concentric or not, I simply turned a recess in the back of this that was the exact diameter of this piece. So now this is concentric, this will fit into a concentric, and now I know that this is about as close as I can get to being perfect. The reason I knew this was concentric, the backing plate, is that I chucked the backing plate in here, I threaded it on, and turned this shoulder on the backing plate. So I knew that this was perfectly centered on my lathe. And with this on the back side of this piece here, I knew it was perfectly centered. So once I cut that and mounted it, this came out really close because of that. So I just wanted to give you a little more of an explanation. Well, I skipped a bunch of recording because we have a whole house vacuum cleaner and my wife decided to vacuum so I couldn't have said anything and I really didn't want to edit into that afterwards the audio but what ended up happening this is now the three jaw chuck and I've not physically mounted this yet the plate but instead of making an adapter I simply took the back side and Oh, took out ten thousandths of exactly the same size as the backing plate so that this actually has a lip to fit into and it's being held in by my tailstock right now I've got the gauge on it yeah I've got a few thousandths run out on it I'm not terribly concerned about that uh, 
I'm I'm really happy with how close it is right now. We'll see once I get it mounted and if I have to clean up any of the uh, jaws or something. But uh, it's as good as it's going to get for this homebrew guy. So uh, now I have to put the three bolt holes in the back and uh, and and just mount it. I might have to take and clean the back up a little so that I can get a bolt hole through there. It's there's a shoulder here and I I don't know if I've got enough space to put a bolt in. So that's that. Uh, we'll come back after I've got it all mounted. Well, here's the final result. I'm out 10, 12 inches on this piece of shaft and uh, I'm doing pretty good here. I think it's vibrating too much but uh, you know it's just a couple of thousands run out there the back you can see not well but I've got three bolts in and I had to just uh, put this plate on a bridge port and there's a shoulder in here you can't see the shoulder very well but right where the bolt hole is I had to just flatten that out a little so let's go to the other end and see how much run out I have here and it's a thousandths two thousandths so it, it's pretty good I I'm extremely happy with the way this truck came out uh, and didn't have to make an adapter the bolt holes worked out really good so that's it. That's this project. Thanks for watching. Bye.